you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class, the Windsor Newton Watercolor Wreath Wall Art. My name is Tim DePack, and I'm from Windsor Newton, and I'll be your moderator today. I'm being joined by Mandy Peltier, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. And Mandy will be taking you through today's class by providing you information about the products that are gonna be used, uh, showing you how to perform some watercolor painting techniques, and then creating this lovely watercolor painting, I'm sorry, watercolor paint, water, yeah, lovely wreath using the watercolor paint from the Windsor & Newton Cotman Sketcher box set. She will also give you a sneak peek at some of her upcoming classes, and we will provide the link for those classes to sign up in the chat on the side of the screen. Also, upon completion of the class, you will receive a survey in your inbox. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics that you'd like to see Mandy perform in the future during one of her classes. Uh, before we begin, for those of you who'd like to print out the sketches, we will drop the link in the chat box as well for you if you need to print that out. And uh, I'd like to let you know that also the class is being recorded and will be available 24 hours. And Felicia told us that earlier that because it's the weekend, look forward for it on Monday and you can go back in and replay and watch this class again. With that being said, I'm gonna pass the class over to Mandy. Thanks, Tim. Hey guys, I am so happy to be back with you today and happy fall. I can say that officially now. So this project is just in time. And whether you're team pumpkin spice or apple cider, uh, or you love it all like me, uh, I'm glad you're here. And so let's get to this fall project. Uh, it's fun and loose and should take us exactly the hour we have. So uh, this is the project. So today's class is going to be a little unique because usually in my classes, we do a very detailed outline. This is meant to be imperfect and loose. So while I did provide a detailed outline for those of you who want it, in class today, we're just going to draw a circle and the lettering. Everything else, we're just going to freehand paint. So that will be probably something new for some of you. And if you're not able to squeeze in every single element because of it, that's okay. You can even take the individual elements and make your own composition with it. So we're going to spend some time today practicing the individual elements before we then put it all together on the actual working paper. So supplies today, what you need, glass of water, an artist palette. We're only mixing five colors today and four out of the five are just straight from the set. And then the fifth color is just two colors. So color mixing is a little easier today. We're gonna use two brushes, a number four round and a number 10 round, both I'm using Cotman brushes. Graphite pencil and eraser just for drawing the basic outline, paper towels for blotting your brush. And then I have a piece of nine by 12 paper trim to be uh, nine by nine in size. I am using today the Windsor & Newton cold press 140 pound professional paper. If you happen to have the student grade paper, I think it'll work just fine on this too, since it's a loose project. So you can really use either one, but I'll be using the professional today. Ironically though, when we practice the individual elements, I'm using the student grade paper just so I'm not wasting a good piece of the professional paper. So you really can use either one today. All right, so with that in mind, I want to get started by drawing the outline and then we'll mix our colors and then we'll paint on the lettering and then we'll practice individual elements before painting those onto the wreath itself. So I'm going to sort of set a few things aside. So I have a little bit more room here to draw. And um, I'm going to start by drawing the circle for the wreath. And if you look at sort of the edges of the wreath, uh, all around, it's about an inch in. So what I like to do to just sort of help me draw the circle is I'm just going to eyeball an inch on the middle of each edge and just draw like a dot. So about an inch down, I'm just drawing a dot. And I'm going to do that on each side of the paper, just draw a dot. And then it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to connect these dots to draw the circle. You don't have to do this. So I'm going to draw basically an arch from each dot to each dot to create the circle here. And then I can sort of go back over and fix it if it looks a little wonky or looks more like a diamond than a circle. If it looks like a diamond, you probably just didn't arch it enough, but you can always go back around and fix the arches. Just like I'm doing here. I had one that was a little too straight, but 
we're going to be, when we put on the individual elements, they'll sort of take care of any areas that don't look exactly perfect. You don't need to draw a perfect circle here. I mean, you probably could go grab a plate or a bowl that's about the same diameter and just trace around it. You could do that as well, but I'm going to get by by just doing sort of a rough circle and calling it good. All right. And then for the lettering, you can uh, copy the lettering example that I have, or you can use your own handwriting. Um, but I'm going to place another dot just right in the middle of this circle so I know where the center is. You don't have to do this. It just helps me. And the wording hello is going to go above the dot and fall is going to go below the dot. And I'm going to do my best to center it. I will be honest with you. Usually with this project, I prefer to do the lettering last because then I'm able to better center it in the middle of all of the elements. But if we do that today, all of the elements will be still wet when we're trying to paint on the lettering and it's gonna be really easy for you to smear the elements. So to kind of prevent that, we are gonna do the lettering first today. But if you wanted to make this again on your own time and you can really take your time and do it slow, um, I would recommend that you actually do the lettering last. It'll be easier to center that way. All right, so I'm gonna start with the H here above the dot, sort of uh, center left. And I'm going to just sort of draw what I see, these fancy letters. And uh, in a lot of my classes, I have um, used markers to do the lettering. We haven't really painted on lettering like we're going to do today. Um, so if you would prefer to paint on your lettering, you are totally welcome to do that. Um, you do not have to paint it on. I do think there's a bit of a learning curve with uh, painting on lettering versus just writing it on or drawing it on with a uh, marker. So feel free to do that today. You don't have to paint it on like we're going to today. All right. And then I'm going to do fall now. I'm going to do my best to get this centered, but who knows? Sometimes it takes, yeah, my F is not quite right. So I'm going to start that over and move it closer to under the H here. All right. It takes a little bit of concentration here to get this right. All right. I'm happy with that. So hello, fall. I like that saying. I, fall is my favorite season. I think this is the best time of year. It's cool Andy, outside. Can you, hold that? can you bring that in close yes. to the camera? Let me see that real quick. The leaves are changing color. I just love everything about fall, the colors. All right, so let's go ahead and mix our paint colors now. And there is a chance that you'll need to mix more paint colors throughout our class today. What we mix to start is more than enough for the wreath and the lettering, but because we're gonna do a little bit of practicing beforehand, just know you, you may have to mix a little bit more at some point during the class. Um, but it won't be hard because there's only five colors. And like I said, four out of the five are straight from the set. So uh, what I'm going to do is pull my Skechers pocket set down, my palette, my water, and my number four round brush. And just like in my previous classes, I always start with just sort of swishing and stirring it in the water just to get those bristles wet. And I'm going to use my number four brush as if it were a spoon. And I'm going to place three scoops into five wells on my palette. So three scoops, just like this. One, two, three. I'm going to do that to the other four wells on my palette. And this just gives us some clean water to activate the dry half pan with. Uh, and it's just going to make it a little bit easier to mix the colors and make it a little bit easier for you at home to duplicate what I'm doing here over the camera. OK. So the first color we're going to mix is cadmium red pale hue, which is the orange color in your set. And I'm going to do seven passes or so of this orange color into the first well in my palette. If you haven't taken one of my classes before, a pass is taking your wet brush. You're gonna run it into that cadmium red pale hue half pan a handful of times, and then you're gonna stir it into those five scoops of water, wipe your brush on the edge of the palette to release excess, and that's one pass. And so it doesn't have to be a slow thing, and I'm gonna repeat that six more times, just wiping my brush, stirring it in, releasing the excess and repeat. And so today's colors, we want to be really pigmented. We don't want them to look watered down because we're only doing one layer everywhere. So we really want them to be pigmented. Uh, we still want them to look transparent. We don't want them to be so thick that it looks like dry brushing, um, but we do want them to be really, really bright, really pigmented. So do seven or so passes of each color into these wells. And as you get experience, you can tell just by stirring if it's pigmented enough. 
uh, it's interesting how that happens. You, it just sort of becomes old hat and you can even not even count your passes. You can just tell by stirring where you're at. So the first one is the cadmium red pale hue. And when you're done with that one, just clean your brush. So what's on your brush doesn't influence the next color. And then the next color that we're going to mix is going to be yellow ochre, which is on the bottom row. It's the yellow that's in the bottom row. And we're gonna do seven passes of yellow ochre into the next well on our palette. All right, so this is supposed, this project is meant to be a little more beginner friendly or at least like not as detailed. So you don't have to worry about perfection here or getting it exactly right. It's still gonna look really lovely. The class I taught on Tuesday and the few classes before that have maybe been more detailed, more realistic, but not today. Sometimes it's fun just to sit down and relax and just do something that feels really therapeutic. And I feel like this project feels a bit more therapeutic. So I'm going to blot my brush here. So we have cadmium red pale hue, yellow ochre. And to our third well, it's going to be the color that's just to the right of yellow ochre, and that's burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is more of the orangey brown shade in this set. And we're going to do the same number of passes of burnt sienna as we have the other two colors into the third well on our palette. It's also kind of nice today that we're not doing a lot of color mixing. We're just kind of pulling straight from the set for the most part. And even the fifth color, you could just pull straight from the set, but I think adding the second color we're going to add gives it a bit more of a fall hue, if you will. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. I do like this burnt sienna color. Uh, I have a fall birthday. My birthstone is pretty much this color. And some people think it's really ugly, but maybe because it's my birthstone, I like it. <laughs> it's grown on me. All right, so that is burnt sienna. And then our fourth well is going to be burnt umber. That's the other brown in your set. Same number of passes, six or seven or so, even eight if you need to. If you use really light pressure when you wipe your brush over the half pan, you may feel like you need another pass. If you really dig it in there, you may not need as many as what I'm suggesting. You just want maybe a little more paint than water. The, really, the goal is make sure they're super pigmented. Mandy, someone asked in the chat if they don't have the burnt umber, is there a that they can do to make that color? Uh, sure, you could use the three primary colors of uh, mix. It would probably be one pass yellow, one pass red, two passes blue, and that would probably get you close to a burnt umber. Um, if it's not dark enough, add more blue. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and then the fifth color, the one where we're going to mix two colors. Let's just start with one, and that's alizarin crimson. And let's do um, five passes of alizarin crimson into that well on our palette. And if you really like this bright red shade, you can keep it. Um, I like to add a little bit of burnt umber to it just to sort of darken it a little bit and give it more of a fall, fall hue. That was a hard phrase to say there. Um, so six or so passes of alizarin crimson. And I feel like it's the right thickness here. I'm gonna add a pass or two of burnt umber. Oh, I just think that's so pretty. <laughs> that dark red color, it's luscious. It looks like the color of uh, fall leaves when they turn red. And that's what this color reminds me of. So that's why I add the brown to it, but you can keep it bright red, no problem. This is your project. I'm just giving you a little inspiration and guidance. All right. So I'm just trying to get this perfect. And I know I'm gonna to have to mix more red later because we're using red on the lettering and then also on a couple elements on the wreath itself. So, all right, so I'm gonna clean my brush and blot it. We're going to use our number four brush for the lettering. So actually, I guess I didn't really need to clean it because we're gonna use the red for the lettering, but what can you do? All right, so lettering. I wanna talk about lettering for just a second because I think painting letters with the brush is hard. <laughs> I think it's a lot easier to use a marker or a pencil. So I wanna to speak to you beginners out there who maybe don't do a lot of um, brush lettering. Uh, maybe something you could do to make it a little easier. It's at least what I did when I was first getting started to help me. So you can see on this example that all of the downstrokes, so where your pencil or brush would be going in a downward motion, those lines are a little bit thicker than what are called upstrokes where your brush or pencil are going in an upward motion. And so how um, experienced brush letter, letterers do it is they, it's kind of how you hold your brush at the angle. So as they're going up, they might be holding it more upright. So just the tip of the pencil is sort of touching the lettering and they'll also be using a light touch. 
And then as they do the down strokes, they're going to push a little bit harder on the brush to make that stroke thicker. But that can be hard to do. I don't know if any of you have tried. I think it could be hard to do. So when I first started doing lettering, um, I just, what I like to do is I'll show you here on the H, I'll just do the light touch with uh, my brush. And then in, instead of trying to treat this as if I were using a pencil, it's okay to break it up into chunks. So to not try and just do one stroke, that can be hard. And then when I get to the down stroke, I still just do a nice thin line. Cause then I'm only having to focus on one, uh, pressure at a time, or I only have to use the brush in one way. And then what I'll do is I'll go in with a second layer and just sort of thicken that downstroke. So you can go over these areas twice. If it's hard for you to do it, um, the appropriate or correct way. Uh, if you want to try it the way uh, a lot of brush letterers do it, I'll show you on the other half of the H you'll sort of start off thin on the upstroke and then press down more on the downstroke and then lift it back up to make it thin again on the upstroke. So you can do it either way. Um, I think like just for me, I think doing it the way I showed you initially where you do thin all the way around and then you thicken it up with the second stroke is a little bit easier, a little bit more approachable. And again, don't be afraid to, uh, don't treat this like a brush or sorry, like a pencil where you're just trying to write like this. Do not be afraid to break this all up into chunks, like do a little bit and then rotate or kind of hit it from left to right instead of right to left. Uh, just do it however makes it easiest for you. Uh, it takes a lot of practice to do brush lettering and, and get it perfect. I don't even think I'm perfect at it. it I have to really focus as I do this. So we'll see if I really uh, mess up today <laughs> with all of you watching and with me talking. So uh, we'll just go ahead and take our time, do all this brush lettering. If I finish ahead of uh, everyone else, you can always finish this lettering after the class is over um, because it's the same thing. We're just using the red on all of it. And we're just trying to make the downstrokes a little bit thicker than the upstrokes, just to give it a little bit of style. And I think one of the points to make here too is that it's probably important that you need to be using a round brush in order to be doing this as well. I don't think you'd be able to do that, let's say a, a flat brush. Or yes, a I wholeheartedly agree with that. Brushes are important. And if you, even the size of your round brush is important. Um, if you're using like, if you're trying to use the tin brush to do this lettering, it's going to be a lot harder to control, especially those upstrokes than the downstrokes. It might be easy to get the downstrokes with a number 10 brush, make it thicker that way. Um, but yeah, absolutely. These round brushes are perfect for uh, lettering. And if you buy uh, lettering markers, like brush lettering markers, they look like a round brush. Uh, they're meant to be used in the same way where you can use the tip of it for the upstrokes and then it, it, they're flexible, so you can press down a little bit harder for all those downstrokes. So yeah, that's a good point, Tim. All right, so I'm working on the fall now. If we did autumn, we would still have a long way to go. So it's probably good we chose fall today <laughs> for, the, for the lettering. All right. And I hope you guys are getting some good fall weather, even here in Georgia. Oh man, it's starting to feel it's not looking like fall yet, but it's starting to feel like fall. I love it. I live for the fall. It's my favorite holiday. I grew up in the Midwest. So fall was always the season to go to the apple orchard and bonfires and hot apple cider and even apple cider slushies. I just love fall. My husband and I have a dream of like buying an orchard and doing that. All right. So I have finished up my lettering. Some of you may not be done. And again, if you're not, that's okay. I just need to be mindful of time because we only have an hour. And I really think it's going to be in your best interest to practice these elements before we just dive in and, and paint them all in a fairly quick manner. So let's go ahead and move on to practicing the individual elements. And if you're not done with the lettering, you can do that when the class is over. So I'm going to set this aside here. And I'm going to pull over that sheet I showed you, and I would like to practice. Well, I want to demo for you the technique for each element, and then we create two together. So you just have a little bit of practice. You can watch me, and then we'll practice two times. Okay, so we're going to use the number 10 for the rest of the class time. 
uh, the number, unless you need to mix more paint and then you'll want to use the number four. Um, but the number 10 is what we're going to paint all the elements with. So I'm going to put the number 10 in the water, give it a swoosh, give it a stir, and then just blot it a couple times on my paper towel. So I'm going to start with the oak leaves. So this, the anchor of this wreath is really the oak leaves. They're sort of equally distanced and um, they're bigger. So I think it's the first thing your eye is sort of drawn to. So we're going to uh, paint on the outline of the oak leaf and then just roughly fill it in. And then we're going to do a line of burnt umber right through the middle. So I will demo for you perhaps with the orange, even though there's not actually an orange oak leaf on the wreath, I can still demo with the orange. All right, so we're going to do basically a scallop on each side and then mirror it on the other side. So I'm gonna start and do like half of a hill or half of a scallop on the top and then do a valley and a hill and a valley and a hill and I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Do a hill and a valley and a hill and then meet it up at the top. So we're just doing the outline. And then I'm going to roughly fill in the left and the right, but I'm going to try and leave the middle without color. So I'm just kind of holding my brush, not quite parallel to the table, but I'm just going to sort of sweep it down on the left and the right, try to leave a little bit of the middle without color. And then without even cleaning my brush, I'm going to dip it in the burnt umber. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stem and pull it right through the middle. And I'm going to allow that brown to just bleed in to the other color. So that is how we do the leaves. Let's try one together. And it doesn't matter what color you use. I'll use uh, burnt sienna, but you don't have to use the burnt sienna here. All right, so we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna do like half of a hill and then a valley and a hill and a valley and a hill and then bring it down to the bottom. And then we're going to mirror that on the other side by doing another hill, valley, hill, valley, meet it up at the top. And then I'm going to just loosely fill in the left and right sides, but I'm going to try and leave the middle without paint. We want a lot of negative space. The negative space or the white of the paper that you see showing through is going to add interest to this project. So be uh, mindful not to try and cover all of the paper as we apply paint today. And then just as we did with this one, or as I showed you with this one, I'm going to put the tip of my brush into the burnt umber, draw a little stem and go right through the middle using the tip of my brush. So when we get to actually painting the wreath, it's going to move quickly because the goal is for it to be really loose, for colors to bleed into each other. So it's good that you guys get a, a little bit of a preview of how we're doing it. So hopefully it won't seem as overwhelming when we're really ready to go for it. All right, so I'm gonna do one more with y'all and that's gonna be with the yellow ochre. It doesn't matter what color you use though. So put a little bit yellow ochre on my brush. We're gonna do that process again, where I'm gonna do half of a hill and a valley, and then a hill and a valley, a hill, bring it down, repeat on the other side or mirror on the other side. It's okay if it's not perfectly symmetrical. This is meant to be loose. And then we're gonna roughly fill in the left and the right. Try to leave the middle without color if you can. And then tip of the brush into the burnt umber draw a little stem and go right through the middle. And if you want, you could do an entire wreath of just oak leaves. That would be pretty. Um, I would start with like maybe yellow as a base and then just layer over with darker and darker colors. Do wet over dry. That could be really pretty. All right. So next are seed pods. <clears throat> I'm calling them seed pods. Um, this project has three different styles of seed pod. The first one are the ones that kind of just look like leaves like small leaves. So they could be leaves. I, I consider them more like a seed pod. So I'll show you with the burnt umber here. So if you took my Mother's Day class, this is essentially the same thing we did for the tulips and the Mother's Day class, only smaller. So we're basically just doing like a rough, loose leaf shape. So I'm going to draw um, a curved line and then maybe just a couple lines right through the middle and then another curved line that meets that first curved line at the bottom and then you can give a little stem. I'll show you that again, because that was fast. All right, so curved line, and then a couple through the middle, just straight lines through the middle of different lengths, and then another curved line that meets that first one at the bottom, and then give it a little stem. All right, so let's try that once or twice here, and then I'll tell you the other two. So you're gonna do a little bit of an arch or curve, couple lines through the middle, and then another arch that mirrors that first one, and 
meets it at the bottom and then give it a little stem. As simple as that. <laughs> That's not too hard, right? I'll give you a second to practice that a couple times and I'll just point out the other one. So the second of the three, uh, what I'm calling seed pods is this kind here that sort of has a fan shape. If you see it's here a few times on the reef. It, this is uh, just a stem. And then you're just going to paint on lines that are in a fan shape, as many as you want. So you're just, and you can even do the fan shape first where you just are gonna kind of draw on lines. They can be different thicknesses. It can even be different lengths. And then a little stem at the bottom. Not too hard, right? So just straight lines in a fan shape. And then you can do a stem at the bottom. And so I don't know if you could see, cause you guys are doing it along with me. So it might've been hard to see, but I kind of start with my brush in one direction and then I sort of flip it to make it easier for me to do that fan shape. So move your brush. Don't feel like you have to do it all the same, you know, without rotating your brush, feel free to move it. So it's comfortable. So you can reach it from a good angle. That will help you with this. Okay, and then the other seed pod is this kind that sort of has a Y shape or kind of looks like a slingshot really without the, the string on it. So we're gonna start with the burnt umber always on this one. And you're just going to paint on a little branch or stem and then sort of a Y shape at the top. And then this is the fun part to make it black. Cause if you look at my finished piece, what's at the tip of those um, seed pods are black but we didn't mix black. Well, we kind of talked about this at my class on Tuesday. We have brown on our brush. In a lot of my classes, we've mixed black by mixing ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So we're going to do that today in a unique way. So I have burnt umber on my brush. I'm just going to run it three or four times over the ultramarine blue half pan and then hold my brush straight up and down and just dot on top of that um, seed pod there, that branch. And it's going to create black when we dot it on top. So I'll show you again because that was a lot of words there. So I start with burnt umber on my brush. I do like a slingshot or Y shape with the burnt umber. And then I'm gonna run my brush over the ultramarine blue half pan just a few times and then dot above and it's gonna look black because the brown and the blue are gonna to mix together to create black. So one more time, create like a slingshot or Y shape. Wipe your brush over the blue a few times and then dot, holding your brush almost straight up and down. So you're just using the tip of your brush to dot the top of that section, okay? All right, so moving on here, because it's already 1.30. Okay, so pumpkins, how we're gonna paint on the pumpkins. We're going to use the um, cadmium red pale hue. We're gonna start with that. And we're just going to paint on the shape of a pumpkin. So it's kind of like an oval. And you can sort of round the bottom just a little bit if you want to make it look more like a pumpkin. So a circle or an oval. And then I just paint on lines for the segments. I paint on like a center one and then one on the left and one on the right. So you're just doing the outline of the pumpkin and then drawing straight lines for the pumpkin segments. And then without cleaning your brush, just put the tip of it into the red. And then I like to just add red to a couple of the segments. I just sort of paint it right over the orange and it kind of helps give it more of that pumpkin orange look. And then to do the stem of the pumpkin, I don't clean my brush. I just put the tip of it into the burnt umber and I just paint on parallel lines and then just maybe connect them at the top to paint on the stem. So the pumpkin, we're gonna use three colors today. So the first, let me show you two more times here, uh, cadmium orange or the cadmium red pale hue. Uh, so we're gonna basically paint on like a circle or an oval shape for the pumpkin. I like to do a center segment, one to the left, one to the right. Tip of my brush into the red, and I'm gonna throw that on just to a couple spots on the pumpkin. I want there to still be some orange, just adding a little bit of another color. Then the tip of my brush into the burnt umber, and I'm gonna paint on the stem at the top. One more time for good measure. All right, so orange for the outline of the pumpkin. Center segment, one to the left, one to the right. Tip of my brush into the red. I'm gonna 
drop that in or swipe it onto a few spots. The tip of my brush into the burnt umber and I'm going to paint on the stem of the pumpkin just with a couple parallel lines and then a line across the top for the stem. Okay, I'm calling this part here grain. It could be like millet or um, I don't know, quinoa, just some kind of grain. And uh, if you notice, it has sort of a triangular or pyramid shape and it uses yellow and then burnt sienna and then red and then burnt umber. So it kind of goes from light value to dark value with the colors we have of these four colors here, not the orange. So I start with the yellow ochre and I just place a single dot at the top because it's going to be like a pyramid shape. So it's going to get wider as we go. And then I maybe do just two and then maybe three below that. And then I put the tip of my brush into the next darkest value, which is burnt sienna. And I do the same width using the burnt sienna, just sort of dotting it on, maybe getting a little bit wider. And then the tip of my brush into the red, and I'm going to add that to about the same width, maybe get it a little bit wider. And then burnt umber, I'm not cleaning my brush in between colors, and then burnt umber to the very bottom. And then which with whatever is still on my brush, it's going to be a complementation of all four colors. I'm going to sort of paint on its stem. All right, so let's practice that real quick again. So we only have five colors to manage today, so that makes it a little bit easier. So you're gonna be using the yellow ochre, then the burnt sienna, then the red, then the brown. So it's a gradation of value of those four colors. So we start by doing the yellow ochre, tip of the brush into the burnt sienna, tip of the brush into the red, tip of the brush into the uh, burnt umber. Hopefully I got all my colors right because we're going to be switching a lot quickly today. <laughs> I might say something wrong. And then the uh, stem of it. I'll do that Andy, one more can time. You hold, can you hold that one up a little bit? Just so people can see the yeah, it's really detailed. Mm -hmm. So it's just dots using the tip of your brush. Just dots and it's okay to overlap. We want them to bleed into each other and we want it to look loose. So it starts with yellow ochre, a few dots along the top. Tip of the brush into burnt sienna. <clears throat> See, I had to think about it so I don't mess up there. Tip of the brush into our red mix. Tip of our brush into burnt umber. <clears throat> and then use whatever's still on your brush to paint on the little stem for it. Okay, so hopefully you guys are with me. <clears throat> if I am moving a little fast today, uh, I always encourage you to uh, rewatch when this is uploaded. You can pause as needed to keep up. Um, but all of this is repetitive. We're gonna work in a systematic manner by starting uh, here and then working counterclockwise around. So even if you're only able to keep up till here, this will be practice so that you can finish the rest, right? So, and if you need a picture of the final image, you can go on my website, mandypeltier.com, and you can see a final Im image on my website if that will help guide you about what to place where, but you also have the outline as part of your download, so. Okay, so acorns. Acorns are probably the hardest. So I'm going to demo for you the acorn first. Uh, so the acorn uses the yellow ochre, the burnt sienna, the burnt umber, and then we'll do that swipe technique into the blue to create more of a black shade. So it starts with yellow ochre, and I draw the top curve of the, the uh, acorn. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to do it over here actually. So I'm going to start with the top curve of the acorn. And then I like to just loosely fill that part in. And then I put the tip of my brush into the burnt sienna. And I'm going to draw one side of the acorn and maybe fill in half using that burnt sienna. And then tip of my brush into the burnt umber and I'm going to do the other half of the acorn and loosely fill in that. So you see how I'm being really loose. There's still a lot of negative space showing. I'm just sort of like, I'm almost like just dotting it on or just blobbing it on. I'm not trying to be real precise today. And then with the uh, burnt umber, I'm going to draw what I believe is called the pericorn. And this is the peri cap, I believe, or maybe I have it reversed. But I'm going to draw, I'm going to paint on the bottom of the acorn that sort of looks like a happy face or a smiley face. So I'm going to do like a slight curve right along the top of the acorn. And then I'm going to make a more dramatic curve at the bottom. And I'm going to just roughly kind of fill that in with the burnt umber. And then I'm going to take my brush with the burnt umber on it. I'm going to wipe it into the ultramarine blue half pan. I'm going to paint on another line at the top of this section to make it distinct from the rest of the acorn. Dot on a little bit of that dark color on the bottom. 
and then I'm going to paint on just a real thin line at the top of the acorn. And I think that real thin line is what makes it look like an acorn. <laughs> I think that is what does it. And then you can just use whatever is on your brush to sort of paint on the stem. So I know that was a lot. I'm going to show you again. So it's yellow ochre for the top of the acorn. You're going to just roughly fill that in. Then tip of your brush into the burnt sienna. Do the right half of the acorn. If you're looking at the acorn, the right half. And then roughly fill in the right half of the whole acorn. Burnt umber. Draw a line on the left half of the acorn and then roughly fill that in. And then draw a slight angled line just beneath the acorn and then a more severe angled line beneath that to look like a smiley face. Then roughly fill that in with the color that's on your brush. Wipe your brush a couple of times into the ultramarine blue half pan. Draw another line just beneath the acorn, dot that on, and then draw a thin line at the top. Should I show you one more time? Since I've shown everything else three times, let me do it one more time and then we'll be ready to go on the wreath. The wreath really is fast to do. All right, so yellow ochre is where we start. So I'm gonna draw an arch for the top of the acorn. I'm going to roughly fill that in. Yellow, or sorry, burnt sienna, align to the right half of the acorn. And I'm gonna fill in just roughly the right half of the acorn. And then brush into burnt umber, align for the left, left half. I'm gonna roughly fill that in. I'm going to trip over my colors today, I know it. All right, and then burnt umber as a subtle curved line underneath the acorn, and then a more severe curved line beneath that. Then roughly fill that in, brush into the burnt umber, and draw another line just beneath the acorn for some separation there, and drop in a little bit along that bottom part, a thin line at the top of the acorn, and then the stem, okay? So here's our elements. I'll hold that up so you can see. And we're ready to get going. So we are not going to paint in a way where we um, do all of the oak leaves and then we do all of the pumpkins. We are going to work in a counterclockwise manner and paint whatever we come across. So this may feel a little overwhelming. Um, I'm going to walk us through every single element just like I did on the exercise, but we will need to move quickly since we only have 20 minutes left. Um, and hopefully this will allow you to keep up with me a little bit better or be able to finish it if um, you're not able to stay until we finish in this class. So, all right, so we're gonna start with this oak leaf up here. This oak leaf uses burnt sienna. And so I'm gonna start by putting my brush into the burnt sienna. And I'm going to start at the top of the oak leaf approximately where I see it on my wreath. And I'm going to do a hill and a valley and a hill and a valley and then bring it down. And I'm going to repeat mirror that on the other side, just like we did in our exercise. I'm going to roughly fill in the left and the right, but try to leave that middle without some color. And then tip of the brush into the burnt umber and I'm going to give it a little stem and pull that color right through the middle of the leaf. And I'm going to keep with the color that's on my brush. We have brown on our brush now, and we have two seed pods to the left and the right of this leaf, and they both use burnt umber. So I'm gonna start with this first seed pod here that has that leaf shape. So how we do it is a curved line, a couple lines through the middle, and then another curved line that meets the first curved line at the bottom. And mine looks a little wink, wonky here. So I'm just gonna fix that up and then give it a little bit of a stem. And then this other seed pod is the one that has the fan shape. So I'm gonna put my brush into the burnt umber just for a second here, cause it's burnt umber. I'm gonna give that a little stem and then I'm gonna paint on those straight lines for the fan shape, just like so. And then let's do this seed pod, the one that looks like uh, a slingshot or like a Y. And we still have burnt umber on our brush. <clears throat> so I'm going to paint on the Y shape. Let's see, do it this way here. And this is the one that after you paint on the Y shape with the burnt umber, you're going to wipe your brush into the ultramarine blue half pan a couple times and then dot at the top. And then we have a grain. 
and you can come up with your own composition. Like I said, you don't have to do exactly this. You can do your own thing if you want. So I'm going to start with the yellow ochre. I'm going to place it a little bit over here so I have room to move down. So I'm going to start with the yellow ochre and do a few dots, making them a little bit wider as I move down. Tip of my brush into burnt sienna and add the same width with the burnt sienna, making that even just a little bit wider. Then the brush into the red, same width with the red, making it slightly wider. And then finish with the burnt umber along the bottom. And then use whatever is on your brush for the stem. This is looking good so far. All right, and then we have our first pumpkin. We haven't gotten to the dreadful acorns yet. I think the acorns look, look the coolest. I think they are personally the hardest, but you guys may disagree. Um, we're gonna do our pumpkin now. So I'm gonna clean my brush because we do want just orange on our brush for the pumpkin. I'm gonna put some cadmium red pale hue on my brush. I'm going to paint on the pumpkin-y shape. And then I'm going to paint on a middle segment, one just to the left of that and one to the right. And I'm gonna place my brush, just the tip of it into the red. And I'm gonna drop on some red. That red and the orange really mixed together to look like a pumpkin, pumpkin-y orange. And then tip of the brush into the burnt umber and we're gonna paint on the stem. Just a couple, two or three even. Maybe not even a couple, three is fine, four is fine. And then an angle at the top to make the stem. And my finished one, I have a, a little bit of a stem in between the pumpkin and the next oak leaf. And I think that's just to make the wreath look more cohesive. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint on that little thin line just beneath the pumpkin, just to give the wreath that circular shape it needs. And then I am gonna clean my brush because the next oak leaf uses yellow ochre. And I want it to at least start off being the pure yellow ochre before we go over it with that line of burnt umber. So I'm going to put some yellow ochre on my brush and just underneath that little brown line we drew for the wreath, I'm gonna do another hill and valley here. So I'm gonna start do half a hill, a valley, a hill, a valley, a hill, bring it down to the bottom, mirror that on the other side. And then I'm gonna roughly fill that in with some paint. Try to leave the middle without some color if you can. And then tip of my brush into the burnt umber and I'm gonna give that a little stem following the curvature of the wreath and then right through the middle of the burnt umber. Hold up so you can see. We're almost to our first acorn, but let's do these two seed pods first. These two seed pods use burnt sienna, but since I have yellow on my brush and it's a lighter value than the burnt sienna, I'm not gonna even clean my brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my brush into the burnt sienna. And then I'm going to paint on these two seed pods and the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna will mix and create an even different value, which will be pleasant for the wreath and add some more variety. So I'm going to do one angle and then another angle a little bit through the middle, give it a stem. This one has another seed pod kind of branching off the main seed pod. So you can also go ahead and add in a second smaller one if you want on this one. And then we have the acorn. We can do this. All right, you guys ready for the acorn? Okay, so acorn, clean your brush. We're gonna start with yellow ochre for the acorn here. So yellow ochre on the brush, I'm going to place it maybe right here. You wanna give a little bit of space to paint on the full acorn. So maybe just a little bit beneath the F cause I, you can see I'm already not exactly where I am on this one but I think we'll still have room to fit everything in. All right, so I'm gonna start with a little arch of yellow ochre. Fill that in loosely, that arch. And then you can do the tip of your brush into the burnt sienna and paint on a line on the right side and then just fill in loosely the right half of the acorn. And then tip of your brush into the burnt umber and draw on a straight line on the left half and then loosely fill that in. And then this is where we draw a slight angled line with what's on our brush just beneath the acorn and then a more severe angled line to make it look like a smile. And then just dot in some color there. 
And then this is where we're going to wipe our brush onto the ultramarine blue so we can get black on our brush. Paint on another line beneath the acorn, dot that onto the bottom part and do a thin line at the top. And now I can go ahead and give it a little stem and I'm gonna connect the stem to that oak leaf stem. All right, so there's that element. That's not so bad, right? How'd you guys do? Thumbs up? All right, good deal. And we have another pumpkin. We have some experience with pumpkins already. So for the pumpkins, it's going to be the cadmium red pale hue. I'm going to do an outline of the pumpkin shape using the cadmium red pale hue. And then a line through the middle, to the left of that, to the right of that. And tip of the brush in the red, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to this pumpkin just for some interest. And then tip of the brush into the burnt umber for the stem. And so you should end up with burnt umber on your brush. Well, mostly burnt umber. And we have another little seed pod, the one that looks like a Y shape and that kind of jutes out from the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna keep what's on my brush and I'm gonna paint on that slingshot, if you will, or that Y shape. And this is the one to put those little black berries or seeds. You're gonna wipe your brush over the blue with the brown to create the black and you're gonna dot it on. Give you guys a second to breathe here and catch up. Our next leaf is going to be a red oak leaf. And this one, because we're kind of working around this way, you can start at the bottom and go up or you can just space it out and work your way down towards the, the pumpkin. I tend to start from the top and work my way down. It's easier for me if I'm painting them the same way every time. All right, so I'm going to put my brush into the red. So I'm gonna maybe two and a half inches or so up onto my outline. I'm gonna start with my hill and my valley, hill, valley, hill, bring it down right to where it meets the pumpkin if you can get it that way. And then bring it back up. And then just loosely fill in the left and right sides. Try to leave the middle with some negative space if you can, doesn't always happen. And then tip of your brush into the burnt umber and draw a straight line just right through it and allow that burnt umber to bleed into that pretty red color. I think the red is my favorite color on this project, which is why I made the lettering that red color. It's so pretty. All right. A couple more seed pods. These seed pods, to be honest with you, these are actually a mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber. I can tell by looking at it. Um, so if you wanna do it the same exact color, all you have to do is put your brush into the burnt sienna and then brush into the burnt umber, just tip, tip, and then you'll have that color. Uh, so you, but you can do it just burnt sienna if you want just burnt umber, but I'm going to give it a little stem and then paint one on. So left doing, um, a curved line to the left, a couple through the middle, curved line to the right. I'm gonna do another stem that sort of jutes out just like so. And then before we do the acorns, let's do this, the grain, the millet, the quinoa, whatever you wanna call it. It's pretty nonetheless. So we're gonna start with yellow ochre. I'm gonna move up a little bit maybe about right here. And I'm gonna do a couple rows of the yellow ochre, like a pyramid shape. Tip of the brush into the burnt sienna, do a few more rows. Tip of the brush into the red, do a few more rows. Just dot, 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 dot. Tip of the brush into the burnt umber, a few more rows. And whatever is on your brush, go ahead and paint on the stem for the grain. And then we have two acorns, two acorns. So one goes to sort of the left of um, our wreath outline and one kind of shoots to the right. So let's do the left one first. I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre and I'm gonna draw that arch for the top of the acorn. I'm gonna loosely fill that in. Tip of the brush into the burnt sienna and I'm gonna need some more burnt sienna, I can tell. 
and draw a straight line on the right side, roughly fill in the right half of the acorn. Then tip of the brush into the burnt umber and draw a straight line for the left of the acorn and then roughly fill that in. And then a slight angled line and then a more severe angled line. I'm going right over my grain because I didn't place well and that's okay. This is meant to be loose. And then roughly fill that in. But look how the acorn dries. Look, the last one we did, I love how it dries. That just looks so cool. All right. And then I'm going to wipe my brush over the blue and just draw that right over the bottom part of the acorn again for there to be some definition. And then that thin line along the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw on its little stem. All right. And then we're ready to do that again for the acorn that goes to the right side of the outline. So let me mix a little bit more burnt sienna here because I'm going to get frustrated trying to pull from this half pan where there's not much burnt sienna. So I just added a scoop of water to that half pan and then I'm using my number four to just mix in a little bit of burnt sienna until it's the right thickness here. All right, I think that's probably good. All right, so we start with a yellow ochre on our brush. I'm gonna to start to the right of the outline and I'm gonna draw a little arch and rough and gently fill that in. And then tip of the brush into the burnt sienna, paint on the right side and then gently fill in the right half of that. Tip of the brush into the burnt umber, draw a straight line for the left half and then fill in the other half of the acorn. And then a subtle curved line just beneath the acorn and then a more severe curved line to look like a smile. Gently fill that in and then wipe your brush on the ultramarine blue and draw one more line along the bottom of the acorn, couple dots along the bottom, little line at the top. And then I'm going to connect that acorn to the first acorn stem. So it looks like a pear not the fruit, <laughs> P-A-I-R. <laughs> All right, and then we are ready for our next oak leaf, which is gonna be uh, burnt umber. I have pretty much burnt umber on my brush, so I'm just going to dip it into the burnt umber without even cleaning my brush. And I'm going to do half a hill, a valley, a hill, a valley, bring it down, mirror on the other side. And then I'm going to just gently fill in the left and the right side, kind of leave the middle blank. Now, since this is brown, you don't really have to do a line through the middle for the burnt umber. You can just leave a little bit, bit of negative space. Um, but I am going to try and paint on a little stem, sort of working behind and in between those other elements I just painted on. But I love how this one looks because that little bit of black that was still on there sort of mixed into the brush as I laid it in. I think it's really pretty. And then we can do this little seed pod here with the same color on our brush, the brown. So that's a curved line, a couple straight lines, a curved line to meet it. And then you can give it a little stem. And then don't even bother cleaning your brush. Just keep what's on your brush. That's the fun part about this project is you don't really have to clean your brush you, uh, unless you're moving to like the yellow or a really light color. You just sort of bounce with the tip of your brush into all the other colors and it still works out. So let's put the tip of your brush into the burnt sienna and let's paint on this other little uh, seed pod, the one that looks like a fan shape. So I'm gonna draw the stem and then the fan shape here. And then I will clean my brush now because we're going to do the pumpkin. And I do like the pumpkin to start off with a pure orange color. I'm going to try and squeeze that pumpkin sort of tucked in between these two seed pods I painted on. So I'm going to put some of that um, cadmium red pale hue. I'm going to paint on the pumpkin shape. It's okay to overlap a little. And then do the segments, one in the middle, one to the left, one to the right. And then tip of your brush into the red, add that to a couple spots. And then tip of your brush into the burnt umber for the stem. And then don't clean your brush because there's one of those little Y-shaped seed pods right above the pumpkin. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. 
and do that little Y shape. And then this is the one where you wipe your brush into the ultramarine blue half pan a handful of times, hold your brush straight up and down and dot it. And you know what? Let's not clean our brush for this one. It might be more of a black color, but that's gonna look nice. So let's do this seed pod, the one that looks like a leaf. So let's see a curve. Ooh, there's even some red in there. Ooh, that's pretty. And then another curve, a couple through the middle, and give it a stem. Okay, and then we have one more leaf. We'll see if we can squeeze it all in here. So the last leaf is also red. You could make this leaf orange because we don't have any oak leaves that are orange, but I wanted the pumpkins to sort of stand out and be orange. So I made two of the leaves red, probably two because I've already said it was my favorite color. So go ahead and put some red on your brush and I'm gonna do a hill, a valley, a hill, a valley, bring it down, mirror on the other side. We're gonna gently fill in the left and the right tip of the brush into the burnt umber and I'm going to paint a straight line through it. So I have just a little bit of space here to try and squeeze on those final elements. Let's see if we can do it. I'm actually going to start this time with acorns. I think it's most important we get the acorns on there, then those seed pods. So this one also, there's one above and one below the outline. So I'm going to put the tip of my brush into the yellow ochre and I'm going to draw an arch along the top, gently fill that in tip of my brush into burnt sienna, draw a straight line, fill in the right half, tip of my brush into the burnt umber, straight line, fill in the left half, do a slight curved line beneath, a more severe curved line beneath that. I'm gonna gently fill that in, wipe my brush into the blue, paint on another thin line, dot that on, straight line along the top. I'm gonna give that just a touch of a stem. I'm going to paint on another stem as well for this other acorn we're going to do here. So once again, uh, let's see here, I'm almost out of yellow ochre, but we're almost done, so I'm not going to mix more. All right, so I'm going to do an arch, gently fill that in, burnt sienna to one side, fill in the left half, burnt umber to the other side, fill in gently the rest, slight curved line, a more severe curved line, and then wipe your brush into the blue, add another line beneath the acorn and the little tiny line along the top. And I think we can do it. We can squeeze it in here. All right, so let's do the grain pod real quick here. We're almost done. And then I'll show you what my next class is as we part ways. So I'm gonna do the grain pod here. So we start with the yellow ochre. We're gonna do a few dots, pyramid shape, then burnt sienna, a few more, red, a few more, Burnt umber, a few more, and then give it a little stem. And then we have two seed pods. I'm not even gonna clean my brush. These are mixtures of the burnt sienna and the brown. So I'm just gonna put my brush on the burnt sienna and whatever brown it creates, that's what we're gonna roll with. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint on the stem, do a curved line, couple lines through the middle, curved line. And then I'm gonna squeeze in the one that looks like a fan shape like so, and we did it. <laughs> we just at the hour as promised. Oh, would you look at that? All right, I, I practice these things to time myself. It's, um, I, there's a method to the madness. All right, so um, before we part ways today, a couple things of note. Um, please follow me on social media if you don't already. My handle is Mandy Peltier Artist. If you want to watch any of the previous classes I've taught or even some of the written tutorials I've put together, you can go to my website, mandypeltier.com. And there's a page on my website that has it all laid out with direct links and embedded videos so that you can watch and even download any of the uh, outlines or written directions for those projects. All right, so my next class, I will be teaching sort of a Halloween themed class. On October 5th, we're going to be doing three five by seven projects that all use a similar technique. Um, so they're more abstract looking, they use water blooms, they use drips, they use um, 
spots and splotches. Uh, so it's going to be fun. We're going to do this crow. We're going to do this cat and we're going to do these bats. So October 5th, that's a Tuesday. And so it's 2 PM Eastern standard time, um, 1 PM central standard time. So I hope you'll join me for that. And I'll have two other classes in October as well. I just, um, I'm not ready to share them with you yet, uh, but hopefully soon, but, um, I know we're just a couple minutes over, but if you were able to keep up with me today, or even just finish half of the wreath, I'd love to see it. If you wouldn't mind um, holding up your artwork. And I know Tim and everyone else at Windsor Newton and Michaels would love to see it as well. All right. Oh, those look gorgeous. I think I say it with the same excitement every class, but like I just, oh, those are beautiful. Nice. And I'm so glad it looks like you guys were able to keep up with me. I always feel like these classes are a little rushed, but um, it looks like you guys handled it in stride. So um, if you're on social media, <clears throat> feel free to tag me at Mandy Peltier Artist so I can see your wreath. I'm just looking at like one inch size thumbnails right now. I mean, they look beautiful from what I can see, but I'd love to see a bigger image. Um, you can also email me if you're not on social media. Uh, my website has a contact tab and you can email me and, and uh, post a picture of your wreath there. And I saw see someone put autumn on theirs. I like that. I like autumn more than fall, but fall was a little bit easier to paint on today. <laughs> so with that, um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful fall slash autumn season. And um, I hope to see you soon.